All right, so this is going to serve as a walkthrough for assignment 142. 142 is our first assignment in our objects and methods section. It's uh, for the classes that I teach. It's one of the three assignments that you will do in this section uh, for basically to close out the marking period and finish off the Python skills that you will need uh, for future use. So um, this video is actually going to walk you through parts two and three. Uh, parts two and three in this particular assignment are kind of uh, part one in particular is more of a reading thing, but part two and three is one that I would like to make sure that you understand uh, both on a concept level but also on a procedural level. So part two, rendering an image on a screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, basically copy and paste a program that is going to use a couple of modules from Python that will load an image uh, into an external window. And it's going to use a couple of different modules to accomplish this. So what we're going to do here first is open up a new file, which I have done. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to save that file. And I'm going to call it jcopperthite142. And that will be saved. That's just like it says in number, number six. Number seven. So we're going, to open up, uh, we're going to open up a couple of files. But first, we have to copy this code. So we're going to select this code from Canopy. We'll right click it copy it and we'll take it over to Python whoops take it over to Python and we will paste it all right so this code is now pasted into here the other thing we need to do in case you haven't already done so and uh, most likely if you just started watching this video haven't done so but back at the top of the assignment there is a sources file for this particular assignment and it contains two pictures you will need to put those pictures and this is very important here you'll need to put those pictures into your current working directory. So if we go to Python, you see that my working directory is users slash jeffrey.copperthite. Your working directory is probably users slash your student ID uh, or whatever it happens to be for your particular system. So when you download the source files to this assignment, again, it's just two pictures, but the two pictures would need to be placed into that folder okay, um, for, for, your, for your use. So if I want to show you real quick how to do that, do I have a file open? No, I don't have it open, but I do have, I can just click it and download it again. That's fine. I already have a copy of it elsewhere. So we download that and see here's the two images right here. We have to extract those into our current working directory. So depending on your computer, you may have to go to this folder right here and unzip them into that folder. Okay and they're now in, there, in that folder. So I'm going to continue now that I pasted the code. Let's take a look at what happens. If we run this file, if we run this code, okay, it is going to load that image. Okay? That's the, one of the images that if, you, if that image doesn't load, that tells me that you did not put the files from the source directory, sorry, from the, from the sources files into the correct working directory. So evaluate where you place those files and make sure you didn't just automatically unzip them to wherever. Okay, so make sure that they, they, this, this picture should pop up as long as the two files are in your working directory. So we loaded that image, we get that file. Let's take a look now at the directions, okay? So here's what we, what just happened, <clears throat> excuse me. The figures created were created by a module called matplotlib. We've used this in past activities. For example, the activities that created histograms. Uh, even in the, if you remember way back to the very first assignment we did in Python, uh, used matplotlib to draw a histogram of 10,000 randomly generated numbers. So matplotlib is making a comeback in this particular assignment. It creates what's called an interactive graphical user interface, or GUI. Remember, if in case you ever forget the definition, you can see it's highlighted with a little dialog box. You can click it and get a definition. Graphical user interface, currently the dominant method for designing human-computer interaction. We're doing this right now on something that is a GUI, graphical user interface. Windows, your phone is also an example of a graphical user interface. Um, the GUI shows coordinates of the mouse pointer as shown to the right. These coordinates are image coordinates, more or less. So in other words, if we go back to this image, and you see how when I have my mouse over the image, we get numbers on the bottom left of that window that show approximately what pixel I'm pointing to or where on that image I'm pointing to. It's not exact because you can't have a tenth of a pixel, but understand that that's kind of the idea. So where my mouse right now is horizontally 90 pixels, 90.6, so about 91 pixels to the right and 30 pixels down. Okay, So if I go over here, I get the same kind of image all the way down there. X is 580. 
oops, off the image, 582, and Y is 953. So that's how far I am down on the Y axis. So um, the Y axis in this case, you'll notice that it does go vertically decreasing. Okay, so these zero, zero points are to the left and, and uh, all the way at the top left, basically. Okay, now, uh, X, Y coordinate of the woman's nose in the image coordinate system. So if I want to answer that question, where am I going to put the mouse? On her nose, right? So is her you nose know, right there, right? So right about there, and you write that number down, ish. Okay, your answer may vary. Now, our objective now is to change the code so that it shows the cat. Okay, so right now, we have a code that shows the woman. So I would need to know what the file name is of that cat. Okay, so I can do that if I want to check that out. I'm going to just open, and I see that there's the cat, right? The cat happens to be in this folder right now. I also have a couple of files that uh, show up later, but I want to make sure that the extension is right. This is a GIF file. So when I put this information into the, into the program, I have to include the extension. Okay? I can't just say cat1-a. I have to say cat1-a.gif. So I'm going to go to that line. And so let's see if we can find on this, on this, um, uh, on this code where do I see a file name? What line number do you spot a file name? Let's see if I can make it a little bigger for you as well. Control plus. Oops. Let's see. Where should I where do I see a file name on this in this code? What line? Yeah, line 13. You see that red text right there that says woman.jpg? That's what you need to change. So if you take this instead of writing woman.jpg, we write cat1-a.gif, right? That's all you would have to do in this particular case, assuming, of course, you put the file in the correct working directory and so forth and so on. So it should still work. Now, if I run the code again, it now makes a second window, which has that cat. Remember that cat? Brings back vivid memories from the beginning of the course, I'm sure. And of course, you would get what's the credit coordinates of that nose. That nose is right about 60 and 40-ish, okay? 60 horizontal, 40 vertical. Okay, so that's pretty much part two. So part two is kind of done with that regard. Now, part three is a little bit more definition oriented, but this is to connect the dots from what we did last class, which was assignment 141, and what you're doing now in this particular module, which is 142. Now we've talked so far about classes, methods, objects, and attributes. A reminder that a class is a category of objects. So we had used in our class, we had actually in our particular class, we used the humans class, all right? Or we used a class that we kind of named like that and we said objects that we can create within that class, maybe humans, we probably would have been better to call it like animals, right? Like a big kingdom kind of classification, okay? And then in the animals class, we can create humans. That's kind of what we should have done in the lesson, but that's okay. So class is an abstract assigning object with methods, variables to store and attributes, right? So all the different kinds of objects that we can create within a class. They have properties that have a set of variables that have unique values for each object, but they also have methods, which are scripts that do things to those attributes or with those attributes. An object, when you create it, it's called an instance. So we've used the word in class instantiate. That means that we create an object that's a member of a class. And when we instantiate that object, we give it methods and attributes as defined by the class. In this particular course, the CSP course, we do not create classes. We use ones that already exist, but it's kind of nice to know what goes on behind the scenes. When you make an object, there is a function within that, that module that instantiates that, that gives it its attributes, that maybe even calls some methods on those attributes, and may even list and print some things for you. Okay, so we kind of summarize that with A. Now, line 18, let's talk about line 18 in this program. Okay, what does it do? Line 18, in this case it's line 19 because when I save this file it sometimes in, in, uh, installs this or adds this line at the very top. It says coding UTF-8, it means we're using universal text format version 8 for this particular code. Sometimes it throws that in there uh, automatically and that's okay. So we, we have to look at line 19, not line 18. So line 19 says this, fig comma ax equals plt dot subplots one dash one. All right, let's see if we can dice out what's going on in this particular line. What does it do? It creates a one by one grid of subplots in a figure. 
The returning is what's called a two tuple. We've talked about tuples in, in past assignments. Those are lists that you can't modify. Once you make those lists, you can't change them. The first element of the tuple is an object that's in the class figure. So remember, figure is a class, like humans and ping pong balls were classes, okay? Golf balls were another class that we used in this particular uh, subject. The first element is a tuple in the object in the class figure. The second is of the tuple is an object in the class axes subplot, okay? So in this case, it's actually, yeah, that's right, okay. So we have named those objects in this case, we have named them fig and x, fig and x. So when we use them in the program, that's how we have to refer to them, okay? But understand that those particular objects are members of a class. So try to differentiate between the two, all right? Now, this particular figure object is being stored in a new variable fig, and the particular axis subplot object is being stored in the variable x, which I just said. That's a lot of information. Fig and axe are both objects. What class is each of them in? So when you fill in the blanks here, you just need to read a couple of paragraphs before that. So I'm not going to you know, read that back to you. You can even rewind the video and see what those answers are there. Now, line 20 or line 21, there's a method that's being called on axe. So the way we look at this, let's blow this up so you can see it a little bigger. The way we look at this is we have three different things that go on. Number one, we want to call the object. We call it by name. You'll recall that when we did this in class, we used the name of the ping pong ball or we used the name of the person as the name for the object. So since we called it in this program AX, X, that's how we would call methods on that object. So when we want things to happen to that object, we use that, that nomenclature to get methods to go on that object. So we got ax dot. The second thing here is what that method, or of course there's many methods that are available to us. We don't, all, we don't have all of them in front of us unless we use the reference card or we look up the modules help online, okay? In this case, there is a method called imshow. What do you think that does? Shows it. it shows an image, most likely, right? Ax dot imshow, and then there's an argument. In this case, it's an argument img. If we go back to the file, if we go back to the, the code, here's line 21. That's the line that it just talked about. And there's also a little modification in there called interpolation. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay. But where is IMG? Okay. That's the question you should look at. Where in this program did IMG come from? Give me a line number, please. Find IMG. Okay, let's blow it up a little bit. How about down? Bigger? Bigger? See it yet? Line what? Well, line, no, line 21 is using it, but where was it created? Image, IMG. Image wasn't created on, on line 19. Line 15. Take a look at line 15. IMG equals plt dot imread file name. And of course, that's going to say, well, where did file name come from? Well, file name came from line 13, which came from a completely different module, os.path, right? And if I continue back up through this code, you'll see that at the very beginning of the code, we imported not one, not two, but three different modules for the use in this function. We imported matplotlib.pyplot, very popular uh, module we use here in this class. We imported os.path, which is a file naming and manipulation uh, module. And then we imported something called numpy. We're going to see numpy in the next method. We're going to see the uh, next, next assignment, excuse me, okay? Which is a great name, I know. All right, now let's talk about more about what's going on in this activity. So it tells you here, the method imshow, it's being given one argument, img. The imshow method is being called on the ax object. Since ax is an instance of the axis subplot class, Imshow must be a method of the axis subplot class, which it is. In line 22, let's take a look at line 22. We've got a couple of blanks to fill in. The method blank is being called on the object blank. Let's talk, let's, let's break that question down. This will be line 23 here. So here's line 23. Boop, I highlighted it for you. Can you see that right there? What's the method? What's the method? What's the method? Show, good. The method is show. It's being called on what object? Hmm. 
Well, what's the, what's the notation again? It goes object dot method parentheses arguments. So if I say what object is it being called on, it's look, you look at the first part. It's fig, okay, which was created back in line 19. All right. So this method is a method of what class, though? That's a great question. We got to come back up here to see what that answer is. Fig was an instance of what class? Well, it's in this paragraph. It says here, line 18, PLT subplots, 1-1, one, one, creates a one-by-one one grid of subplots in a figure. It returns a two-tuple. The first element of the tuple is an object in the class figure. Figure, right. So, in that, so they fill in that blank, and that particular spot right there is figure. That method is being given how many arguments? How many arguments in fig.show parenthesis parenthesis? How many arguments? How many arguments? None. Zero. Zilch, right? You can have and often will have methods that do not take any arguments. Okay? And later on in the activity and also in the next part of the video, you will see that there is a reason there's no arguments. And also you can kind of guess what that last line actually does. Okay? All right. So to carry on in this assignment, if you want to move over to the second part of the video, which was recorded last year, uh, that would cover part four of this assignment and it would also cover part five of this assignment. Okay, so I'm going to let you off to your own, on your own here to get this uh, particular assignment done. You want to, of course, use log files to show your work to your teacher. And uh, good luck. Have a nice day.